Hello friends, this is Sanjay. In this video, we will be covering the 30 EVS questions from CTET December 2021 paper 1. This particular paper was conducted on the 6th of January of 2022. This is the English version. If you prefer uh, Hindi answers and explanations, then there is a separate video where I have covered the same questions in Hindi as well, which you can watch. The CTET December 2021 examination started from the 16th of December 2021 and was conducted all the way till the 21st of January of 2022. So the exam was conducted over a period of 23 days. So there are 23 different versions of paper 1 that we can solve. And since each paper has 30 questions per subject, we will be solving 690 questions in each subject. So we will be solving 690 EVS questions in this specific series. These 690 questions will cover the entire EVS syllabus that you need to prepare for for the next exam. So let's get started. The distance between Mudgaon and Nagar coil is 1134 kilometers. If this distance is covered by a train in 21 hours, the average speed of the train between the railway stations of these two cities in meters per second is what? Now this is a very simple question if you pay attention to the details. Now the first thing is what is the distance traveled by the train? It is 1134 kilometers. So let's write 1134 kilometers here. And what is the time that is taken by the train to cover this distance? It is 21 hours. Therefore, let's put 21 here. If we divide the distance in kilometers by the time in hours, we will get the speed of the train in kilometers per hour. And when we divide this, we will get 54. So the train has traveled at a speed of 54 kilometers per hour. Now, many students will select 54 and move on to the next question. However, 54 is the incorrect answer because this is 54 kilometers per hour. Whereas here we are being asked to identify the average speed of the train in meters per second. So we have to convert this into meters per second. Now 54 into 1000 because every kilometer has 1000 meters. We will get 54,000 and every hour has 60 minutes and every minute has 60 seconds. So we will get 3600 seconds in every hour. So if we divide this, then we will get 15. So this 15 is actually meters per second. Therefore, the correct answer is 15 meters per second. A student is at a point A. So let us put a point A here and he wants to reach a point B. For this, he first goes to O, which is 90 meters due north of A, which means that he is traveling in the northern direction for a distance of 90 meters and he reaches this point O. And from O, he goes to B by covering a distance of 120 meters in the due west direction, which means from O, he is traveling 120 meters and he reaches a point B. So he wants to reach B. Now we are being asked that the minimum distance of A from B, which will be this and the direction of A with respect to B are what? Now first let us tackle the direction of A with respect to B. That is if you are standing at the point B, then the direction of A is towards southeast. Therefore the correct answer has to be either this or this because both of them have southeast in it. So we'll eliminate the first option and the last option which are mentioning southwest. Next, we have to calculate the distance between A and B. So now if you look at this figure, this is a right angle triangle. Therefore, AB will be the hypotenuse. Now, AB is equal to the square root of 120 square, which is this plus 90 square, which is this which will be square root of 14400 plus 81 hundreds now this will be 22500 square root so if we do the square root we will get 150 so the distance between a and b is 150 therefore it will be 150 meters towards the southeast direction. Therefore, this is the correct answer. Select the true statement about sloth from the following. 
now we have been given four statements here and this question has been taken from the ncert class 5 evs textbook from a chapter called super senses where there is some information give out, given about an animal called the sloth now if we read the information it says that it looks like a bear but it is not it is a sloth it spends almost 17 hours a day sleeping while hanging upside down so now we have one bit of information 17 hours so let's look at uh, all the options and see if we can eliminate any of the options the last one says it spends about 20 hours a day sleeping it should be 17 therefore we will eliminate this the next one also says 20 hours so this is also wrong and the next one also says 20 hours so this also is wrong therefore we are left with only one answer choice that is option one so that has to be the correct answer now if we read the rest of the information provided it says that the sloth can live for about 40 years so 40 years and it sleeps for 17 hours so 17 hours so this is the correct answer woolens that is clothes made out of wool keep us warm in winters and the reason for woolens being insulators is which of the following now this question is both a general awareness question and this is also a question that is taken from the class 7 science textbook from a chapter called heat so woolen clothes keep us warm because wool is a poor conductor of heat and it also has air trapped in between the fibers and air is an insulator therefore when we look at the answer choices the second one says that woolen fibers have air trapped within them and air is an insulator therefore this is the correct answer as per the information given in the textbook and also through general awareness on the map of golconda fort printed in the textbook of class 5 one centimeter is uh, equal to a distance of 110 meters on the ground on this map the distance between fateh darwaza and banjara darwaza is 14.2 centimeters on the ground the minimum distance between these two would be how much now the question is telling us that in the map that is printed in the book one centimeter is equal to 110 meters in real life so if the distance between two points in the map is 14.2 centimeter then what would be the distance in real life so we just have to do a simple cross multiplication first so we'll multiply 14.2 into 110 so we will get 142 into 11 here so that will be 142 in 142 so 2651 so it will be 1562 meters now all the answer choices are in kilometers so we just have to divide this 1562 by 1000 so that will be 1.562 so the correct answer is 1.562 kilometers in real life. A group of three states having Arabian Sea on one side is which of the following? You have to be very familiar with uh, the map of India and you should remember at least the states which are towards the Arabian Sea and the states which are towards the Bay of Bengal. Because almost every year there will be at least one question about this. Now, if you look at the states which are towards the Arabian Sea, we see that Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka and Kerala are the states towards the Arabian Sea. So, when we look at the answer choices, the first one has Kerala. So, Kerala is towards the Arabian Sea. Then Karnataka, yes. Then Maharashtra, yes. Therefore, the first option is the correct option. There is a dance in which people sit in pairs in front of each other holding bamboo sticks on the ground as the drum beats the bamboos are beaten on the ground the dancers step in and out of the bamboo sticks and dance to the beat the name of the dance and the state where it is uh, performed respectively are what now to answer this question you just have to remember that bamboo sticks is a clue that this dance is bamboo dance and this bamboo dance is called chera and this is performed in the state of mizoram therefore chera mizoram is the correct answer now this question has been taken from the class 5 EVS textbook from a chapter called Whose Forest where there is a mention that they do their special chera dance and it is mentioned that this particular dance is actually done in the state of Mizoram. The name of the fifth woman in the world and the first Indian woman to reach the peak of Mount Everest is what? Now there are four names mentioned in this uh, answer choices. So the first one Bachindri Pal, she was a mountaineer and she is also the first 
Indian women to reach the peak of Mount Everest. Therefore, Bachindripal is the correct answer. In fact, there is a chapter up you go in the class 5 EVS textbook which talks about Bachindripal and her achievements and the difficulties that she faced in climbing Mount Everest. Let's also look at the other names in the answer choices because these are also names that frequently come up in the questions in the EVS uh, question paper. Sunita Williams is an astronaut of Indian American origin and Karnam Maleshwari is a weightlifter and she also represented India and won a medal in the Olympics. And uh, Santosh Yadav is the first woman in the world who climbed Mount Everest twice. So you have to remember all of these names because you will find questions which have these options quite frequently. Select the correct statement from the following about the famous Indian festivals namely Holi and Diwali. Now this question is based on the information given in the class 6 social science textbook in a chapter called the earth and the solar system. Amavasya or no moon day is actually called new moon day in English and it is mentioned that Holi is celebrated on a full moon day in the month of Phalgun and Diwali is observed on Amavasya or new moon day in the month of Karthik. So the correct answer here is Diwali is uh, celebrated on no moon day and Holi is celebrated on a full moon day. Therefore, this is the correct answer. The easiest way to remember this is that Diwali, which is the festival of lights, is celebrated on a night when there is no moon or no other light in the sky. Therefore, Diwali is celebrated on no moon day and Holi, which is the festival of colors, is celebrated when there is enough light in the sky to actually see some colors. So it is celebrated on a full moon day. So festival of light, no moon, festival of colors, full moon. And this is the correct answer. Consider the following statements in connection with desert oak. So desert oak is a type of tree and there are four statements about desert oak. So we have to identify which of these statements are correct. Now in class four EVS textbook in a chapter called Abdul in the garden there is information about this particular tree called desert oak. It says that desert oak is a tree that is found in Australia and it grows almost as tall as your classroom and there is plenty of information given about this tree here. Now when we look at the answer choices, the first one is this tree grows almost as tall as a general classroom wall. So this is correct. And this tree is found in Abu Dhabi. Now this is incorrect because it is found in Australia. Therefore, statement B is incorrect. Therefore, any option which has B in it will also be incorrect. Therefore, A, B, D can be eliminated and A, B, C and E also can be eliminated. Now, the next one that is uh, the trunk of this tree stores water. This is correct. So, C should be there in the answer choice. Therefore, the first option that is A, C and D should be the correct answer here because both A and C are here. And even if we look at the other remaining statements, we'll find that they match with the answer. That is only D. That is the roots of this tree go nearly 30 times its height till they reach water is also a correct statement. Therefore, A, C, D is the correct answer here. There are villages in our country where because of frequent heavy rain, the villagers build their houses almost 10 to 15 feet or 3 to 3.5 meters above the ground on bamboo pillars. The inner sides of the houses are made of wood. These villages must be in which state? Now this question is based on information given in the class 3 EVS textbook in a chapter called a house like this, where it is mentioned that a child introduces himself saying that he is from Molan village in Assam, where it rains heavily and houses are almost made 10 to 12 feet above the ground. So this information says that this particular village mentioned in the question where it rains a lot and houses are built at least 10 to 15 feet above the ground on bamboo pillars. So this particular type of houses are built in villages in the state of Assam. Most of the common people in which one of the following states or union territories in our country prefer to eat boiled tapioca with any curry made using coconut. Now this question is based on the information given in the EVS textbook chapter called foods we eat in class 3 and it is mentioned that uh, the people in Kerala prefer to eat boiled tapioca with uh, any curry that is made out of coconut. Therefore the correct answer here is Kerala. So you have to read this chapter because uh, there is a mention of uh, different types of foods that are preferred by people in different states 
and almost every year there will be at least one question from this chapter so you have to read the different types of uh, foods and uh, the different types of uh, uh, delicacies that are enjoyed in different states the best period for the people of bihar to start the process of beekeeping is which of the following this question is based on the class 4 evs chapter 5 anita and the honey bees and in that chapter it is written that honey bees lay their eggs from october to december and that is the best time to start beekeeping so the answer here should be october to december so october to december is the correct answer in the context of nutrition of human beings assimilation means which of the following this question is based on the information given in the class 12 science textbook a chapter called nutrition in animals which talks about the various steps in the nutrition of human beings the first is ingestion where we eat food and then the food is digested in the body and the digested material is absorbed into the body and it is transported to the different organs and this transportation to the different organs results in the creation of complex substances such as proteins which are required by the body so this process where the absorbed food is actually transported to the different organs in the body where they are used to build complex substances such as proteins is called assimilation therefore here in the op- options the digested material is utilized in making complex substances in the body this is given in this chapter therefore this is the correct answer consider about the soil of a field in which a farmer is growing paddy and the crop is grown over and over again using excess of chemical fertilizers and pesticides in your opinion this practice will make the soil of the fields into what now this is both a common sense question and this question can also be answered using the information given in the class 5 evs textbook a seed tells a farmer story and if a farmer is growing paddy or any other crop and if the same crop is grown over and over again and there is an excess of chemical fertilizers and pesticides that are being used in that particular field then after some time the soil will become useless that is it will become barren therefore the correct answer is barren and if you look at the information given in this chapter that also says that growing the same crop over and over and using so many chemicals has affected the soil so that nothing can grow here which means that the soil has become barren therefore this is the correct answer the purpose of home assignment in evs is what now you have to remember that home assignment is not homework because homework as such is not encouraged in evs and it is not encouraged in any subject in the primary level so what is this home assignment home assignment is where you are telling the children to complete a task at home for example you are teaching about the concept of food in the school and you tell the children go home and talk to your parents and find out about what are the different types of food that they like so what you are doing here is you are connecting what the child is learning in school with what is actually happening in real life in his or her family so you are it is a extension of what the child is learning and you are connecting it with what the child can learn at home so it is not for revision or reinforcement it is not for utilization of time at home and it is not for mastering any concepts home assignments are used as a extension of learning therefore this is the correct answer if we refer to the ncert students learning enhancement guidelines document there also it is written that home assignments may be thoughtfully given to supplement to classroom teaching that is they are supplementary to what the child is learning in school therefore this is nothing but an extension of learning sheila has taken up the sub theme animals to teach class 3 students which of the following activities will be beneficial for extension of their learning now when it comes to evs any activity you should look at it from a concept that if i hear then i forget if i see i remember if i do that is if i am doing something in real life if i am doing something practically then i remember therefore there is a lot of emphasis on the i do aspect in evs which means that when you are looking at various types of activities the one which has the most practical and real life activities should be the correct answer now if you look at the option the first one says reciting the names of uh, local animals from a poem so now you are just reciting the names of local animals so this is more like uh, rote learning or memorization therefore this cannot be the correct answer next seeing pictures of zoo animals and local animals this 
is better than reciting names but still you are just looking at some pictures so children don't get a real life example of what these pictures look like in real life for example in a book an elephant and a duck will probably be of the same size in a picture however if you look at these animals in real life that's when you realize that how big an elephant is and how small a duck is therefore seeing pictures does not give a proper context therefore this is not the ideal activity next seeing animals in a zoo now this is the best option here because when they see animals in a zoo they can actually see the animals in person and get a better understanding of what they are all about right therefore this is the correct answer and this will be beneficial for extending their learning the last one is seeing cutouts of animals so seeing cutouts of animals is nothing but similar to seeing pictures of zoo animals therefore this also is incorrect and if you refer to the ncert students learning enhancement guidelines or the ncert evs uh, syllabus document in both these it is mentioned that you should maximize the actual physical experimental and observation activities when it comes to evs therefore seeing animals in a zoo is the correct answer which is the most appropriate strategy to find out about festivals celebrated in the community that are linked with water now when we look at uh, the answer choices the first one says peer group learning which is correct then watching videos on festivals of the community which is also correct and talking to the elders in the family and community also correct and discussing with the teacher definitely correct so now we have four correct options so in questions like this we have to evaluate each of the options and rank them in some order so that we can choose the best of these four now the first one peer group learning now we are talking about uh, very young children class 3 4 or 5 children right so they don't have enough knowledge that they can share between each other so their knowledge will be incomplete so peer group learning might happen but it is not useful at this stage therefore this will be at level 4 next watching videos on festivals of the community so rather than just talking among themselves if they watch some videos about uh, the various festivals celebrated in india then probably they learn a lot more at least better than what happens in peer group learning therefore this can be at third stage And then discussing with the teacher so the teacher knows what is the kind of uh, festivals that are linked with water and what should be taught to children at this age therefore talking to the teacher or discussing with the teacher is definitely better than just watching videos therefore this has to be at number 2 however the remaining option that is talking to the elders in the family and the community this is the best option when it uh, comes to knowing more about uh, the various festivals that are celebrated in the community and that are linked to water for example when we talk to the elders in the family and the elders in the community then we get to know the various uh, types of festivals where we go and pray to lakes and pray to rivers or uh, there are uh, festivals uh, where uh, uh, rivers and uh, seas are actually honored so there is a reason for that so this also shows the kind of importance that is given in our culture to the various uh, sources of water therefore talking to the elders and talking to the family and the community helps us or helps the children in learning more about various uh, festivals that are linked with water therefore this has to be the correct answer and this is at level 1 now if we refer to the ncert learning outcomes at the elementary stage document even there there is a mention about the discussion that should be done with the teachers and the elders and family members to learn more about various things which happen in the community why are there no textbooks of evs in class 1 and 2 now this is a very important question because uh, every year there will be at least one question which will talk about uh, how evs is taught at various levels how it is taught in class 1 and 2 and how it is taught in classes 3 4 and 5 now if you refer to the ncf document it says that in classes 3 to 5 evs is introduced as a separate subject however in classes 1 and 2 evs is taught but it is not taught as a separate subject the concepts of evs are integrated with language and mathematics now when we look at the, all the answer choices the third one says the concepts and skills pertaining to evs are taught through language and mathematics so this is what is written in the ncf document as well therefore there are no textbooks of evs in classes 1 and 2 so this is the correct answer which of the following is an example of socio cultural environment 
Now the context of this question is that uh, in the NCRT learning outcomes uh, at elementary stage document, there is a mention that uh, in EVS, we talk about uh, various types of uh, environmental issues and these may be connected to natural, physical, social or cultural environment. Now when we look at uh, the options, water, forests are actually natural environments and monuments are physical environments and community is actually social and cultural. Therefore, here which of the following is a socio-cultural environment that has to be community. The approach of presenting EVS concepts at a primary level such that students have to consult members of the family and community to find out more about the different types of food, shelters, etc. The reason for this is what? Now, if you imagine a situation where a teacher is touch, teaching about the concept of food in the classroom and the children can come from backgrounds where their family members might be vegetarians, some children might come from non-vegetarian families and some children might come from only egetarian families where they eat only eggs but no other non-vegetarian items. So, if the teacher is teaching something about food, when they go and talk to their family members and their community, they get to know a lot more about foods in their own context. Now, teaching about non-vegetarian food to a child who comes from a vegetarian background leads to unnecessary confusion, right? So, the lessons can be quite generic and the more specific details, the more in-depth details about what are the various kinds of foods that are eaten in their family and their community is something that children can learn more by talking to members of their family and their own community. Therefore, students' socio-cultural background, that is the kind of social and cultural background that they come from, is a primary source of learning. Therefore, this is the reason why children are encouraged to consult members of the family and community. And this is also written in the EVS learning outcomes at elementary stage document. Which of the following strategy is most appropriate for teaching EVS to the cognitively impaired students? Before answering this question, we have to understand what is this cognitive impairment? Now, impairment is a disability. There are different types of disabilities. There is sensory disabilities such as children who cannot see or who cannot hear. And there are physical disabilities. That is, children who have difficulty in uh, walking or children who have uh, issues with their uh, hands. So, locomotor or with their hands and legs. So, this is physical disabilities. And cognitive disabilities are also called intellectual disabilities. In other words, these were previously called as uh, mental disabilities right? because these are involving the brain. Therefore, here we are being asked that which is the best strategy or the most appropriate strategy for teaching children who have brain related disabilities or mental disabilities. And the correct answer here is to provide work in small segment followed by a break and it may be useful to split assignments into small parts. So these are all mentioned in the NCRT including children with the special needs document. So if you look at the answer choices, the third one which says breaking the tasks into small parts and completing the parts separately, this is the most appropriate way of teaching EVS concepts to cognitively impaired children so that they can tackle these small tasks or the small parts separately and each one of them can be completed at their own pace. So this is the correct answer. Which is an important step to analyze the content of EVS in lesson planning? Now, when we look at the, the main steps in lesson planning, then we see that initially the objectives are defined, then the content is uh, identified, and then the pedagogy is uh, decided, and the assessment structure is decided. So these are all the main steps in lesson planning. So what this question is asking us is that in this content, right? So if you have to analyze the content, then which of these is an important step in the analysis of content as a part of lesson planning? Now, here the answer is concept map because it is only after you draw the concept map, you get a better understanding of what the subject is all about. For example, if you are talking about food, then you draw a concept map like this saying that food can be of different types and you are going to talk about the nutrition from different types of food or 
you will talk about the sources of food these are plant based or animal based and you are going to talk about the nutrition in each type of food so you are going to create a concept map to analyze the content therefore here the answer is concept map now if you look at objectives of the content thus it is a first step wherein you are saying that children will be taught about food so that is not helping you analyze the content next resources to teach the content is not helping you analyze the content this comes only after you have analyzed what is the content to be taught next assessment of instructional objectives are uh, planned that is this is the last step because once you have decided what is going to be taught you are going to think about how you are going to assess the outcome of the teaching learning process therefore when it comes to analyzing the content concept map is the tool that is used the word comprehensive in continuous and comprehensive evaluation is related to which of the following now when we refer to the ncert continuous and comprehensive evaluation guidelines there is a mention that continuous assessment refers to the child's holistic development that is it is not just about cognitive level what the child is understanding it is not just about scholastic area that is what the child is actually doing in terms of the lessons how he is doing well in the tests and the exams and the studies and it is not just about the co curricular or the extra curricular activities but comprehensive and continuous evaluation means we are looking at the holistic or the complete development of the child therefore this is the correct answer which of the following is an example of assessment for learning in evs now before answering this question we have to remember that there are three main types of assessments there is assessment of learning then there is assessment as learning and assessment for learning now assessment of learning is a post mortem exercise this is where you are trying to assess the children after the lesson has been completed so the results of this assessment of learning will not help the teacher change the teaching methodology or change the lesson plan because the teaching and the learning process for that batch is already over so when we look at the options test at the end of each unit so the unit is already complete so this is assessment of learning then half yearly test so the half of the year is already done so all the syllabus for that half of the year is already completed therefore this is also assessment of learning and annual exams so which means that the entire syllabus has been completed the teacher does not have any opportunity to go back and change the teaching styles for that batch therefore all these three are actually assessment of learning now when you look at the first option that is students find out coastal states of india on the map of india through the worksheets now the teacher is using this exercise to understand what the children already know about the various states in india how well they are familiar with the map of india so if the teacher finds that children are already very familiar and they are already they know a lot about the coastal states of india she can move on and move into more advanced topics but if she finds that children can't identify the coastal states then she can go back to the basics so she can change the lesson plan the teaching methodology based on the outcome of this exercise so this type of assessment is called assessment for learning and that is the correct answer here select the pedagogical practices to enhance experiential learning in evs according to nep 2020 so this uh, question can be answered either through your understanding of what experiential learning is all about and you can also refer to the nep 2020 document where there is a section 4.6 about experiential learning now when we just look at the meaning of experiential learning this is a type of learning where the children are participating they are observing and they are experimenting so this is hands on learning and not just theory so when we look at all the options look at all the options where children can participate hands on and not just listen to some theory right so focusing on the key concepts of evs you are just talking about some theory here right therefore this is not a pedagogical practice that enhances the experiential learning experience now next one integration of arts in pedagogy which means that if children are being taught about painting if there are actual painting classes and workshops in the teaching and learning process then children can actually participate and learn more so integration of arts in pedagogy is correct next integration of storytelling in teaching of evs 
so when you tell stories or use narratives then children can actually participate they can understand better they can relate to the topic or the subject therefore this is also correct so both b and c are pedagogical practices that enhance or improve the experiential learning in evs therefore the answer should be b and c so it is b and c here and if you look at what is written in the nep 2020 document there also it is said that and all stages experiential learning will be adopted it will include hands on learning it will be arts integrated and there will be storytelling also in the pedagogy therefore integration of arts and storytelling are specifically mentioned in the nep 2020 document an evs teacher asks her students to find out about the eating habits country of origin external features such as size color hair etc of zoo animals on a visit to the zoo through this activity which process skills does she promote now this question can be answered by referring to the ncert continuous and comprehensive evaluation guidelines where all these aspects such as observation exploration questioning experience and all these are actually discussed about so you can refer to this document and answer this question or you can also just look at all the answer choices and identify the correct answer for example when they go to the zoo what do the children do they first observe all the animals and when they observe the animals they will have some questions a giraffe is so tall how does it eat grass so then they have these questions and they observe or they look at the giraffe and then they realize that the giraffe can actually eat leaves from tall plants so they are sensitive to the kind of information that they can observe and they can take from the environment and once they come back to the class when you ask what did you learn in the zoo right so the children can say that i saw a giraffe and i had a doubt as to how does it eat grass and then i saw that it was not actually eating grass but it was eating leaves from tall plants therefore that seems to be the preferred food of the giraffe so the student is actually observing then questioning then sensitivity that is absorbing the information that is available and then communicating what he or she has understood so this is the process skills that are promoted through this activity of visiting the zoo right so the correct answer is option 3 which is a theme in evs at a primary level now this is a very very important question because uh, every year there will be at least one question talking about the themes or the sub themes in evs now evs has six themes that is family and friends food water shelter travel and things we make and do and the first theme that is family and friends has four sub themes which are relationships work and play animals and plants now this question is asking us which of this is a theme at the primary level and the answer is water because water is actually a theme which of these is a higher order question that a teacher will select in assessment of evs now to answer this question we have to first understand what is a higher order question a higher order question is also called a divergent question where there is no one single or one set of correct answers a divergent question can have many many correct answers and the divergent questions will help us understand what is the child's thinking process thought process his different ideas now the ncert evs class 3 to 4 5 was syllabus document also talks about higher order questions it says that evs classrooms need to provide opportunity for the children to be able to progressively ask higher order questions that require different level of reasoning and investigation by planned activities now the purpose of this higher order questions is to allow the children to phrase their own questions to answer them to discuss and to investigate them right so when we look at the options the first one is what are the five roots that we eat now this is a convergent question that is there will be only one correct answer or only one set of correct answers therefore this is not a higher order question this is not a divergent question next what is the green color of the leaves due to green colors of the leaves is due to chlorophyll there is there is only one correct answer therefore this is also not a higher level or or a higher order or a divergent question therefore this can be eliminated the last one what are the steps of harvesting wheat crop starting from sowing seeds now this 
process of harvesting wheat crop from the time of sowing seeds also has one correct answer because you just need to know the process therefore this is also not a higher order question or a divergent question now look at the second option that is what would happen if there is no petrol or diesel on the earth now this is a divergent question because there is no one correct answer to this and this is a higher order question because it is allowing the children to think to ideate and come up with their own thoughts and opinions and answer the question in their own way therefore this is the higher order question that the teacher can use in assessment of evs five groups of eight children performed a skit or a drama each to depict ways of preserving wildlife their creative expressions and understanding of evs concepts can be assessed most appropriately through which of the following now if you look at all the four options they are all different assessment techniques used in evs now portfolios is used for tracking the assessment of individual children all their projects their assignments and everything is actually kept in a single file or a folder and that is called a portfolio therefore if you are talking about five groups of eight children and you are trying to assess them then that is uh, not done through portfolios therefore this can be eliminated next observation and recording of performance if you are just observing and recording the skit or the drama then this is not much of an assessment that is happening here therefore this also can be eliminated next pen and paper test after performance to check the evs concept so this is just checking the evs concepts so how can you assess their creative expression so this is also incorrect now we are left with only one option that is rubrics to assess performance and understanding of evs concepts which is the correct answer now what is a rubric a rubric is nothing but a kind of a framework that has the different parameters under which the children can be assessed so if you are trying to assess the entire set of children as a group then what you do is you use a rubric like this saying that in terms of the theme and concept of the skit or the drama performed by the children what is the level that they have shown in the sense what is their level of understanding in terms of theme and concept was it very good so which is level 3 or was it just average that is level 2 or just just meet the expectation at level 2 so you can decide on the rating scale right and similarly clarity and innovation you can rate them at any level and creativity you can rate them at any level so a rubric is actually useful for this type of assessment therefore the answer here is rubric and with that we have completed the all the 30 evs questions from this question paper if you have any questions comments or feedback please post them in the comments below and we will definitely answer them please do like this video and uh, please do subscribe to our channel so that uh, you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and uh, if your friends are also preparing for the same exam please do share this video with them so that you can help them out and you will also help us out by increasing the viewership in our channel so thank you and i will see you again in the next uh, video till then stay safe and take care